Madison passed her praxis exams with a little help from her friends here at 240. Check out this review. She used our diagnostic test to figure out what areas to brush up on, and then she used our guides and she crushed it. My name is Austin, and along with the team at 240, I make videos that help teachers, or soon to be teachers like you, pass their exams and get in the classroom. This video is gonna prepare you for the Praxis Middle School Mathematics Test. That's number 5169. Nice. This video is gonna cover three things. What's on the test and how to study for it. We'll dig into the concepts that you're gonna to need to know. And at the end, we'll get our hands dirty with some practice questions. Now, the middle school math exam consists of just two areas or competencies, arithmetic and algebra and geometry and data. I know that's some intense sounding verbiage, but don't worry, we're gonna break down all of it. And I've got some good news right off the bat. You will get to use a graphing calculator on this test. The first competency that we'll look at is arithmetic and algebra. This competency will make up a whopping 62% of your exam. Now we can break this category into three sections. Numbers and operations, this is the arithmetic part. Algebra, and yeah, this is the algebra part. And then the poor, forgotten, not good enough to make it in the category name, functions and graphs. But to any functions and graphs watching at home, don't worry, I'd never forget about you. Anyway, let's dive into numbers and operations. In this section, you're gonna need to be able to solve general math problems correctly. This includes decimals, percentages, and fractions. For example, you'll likely be given a problem and you'll need to use the order of operations to solve for the correct answer. Trying to solve without the order of operations is gonna leave you with the wrong answer, so it's all about knowing which step to do first. Remember PEMDAS? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You're gonna to need to know what order to do specific operations in so that you can solve the problem to get the correct answer. The next stop on the train is algebra. You might already know what's coming here, find X. And sadly, you're not allowed to circle X and just go, there it is. So in the algebra section, you'll need to be able to move terms within an equation from one side of the equal or inequality sign to the other to solve for the value of a variable. You may even need to solve for multiple variables within a set of equations. For example, here's a system of equations where we need to solve for both X and Y. Now, if you're looking at this and you're unsure where to start, do not worry. We walk through the whole thing from start to finish in our online study guide. Here, take a look. First, we stack the equations and add them vertically to eliminate one variable. Then we solve for the remaining variable. In this case, that's Y. Finally, we take that value and plug it in. And here we go, we find X. All right, last piece of arithmetic and algebra is functions and their graphs. A big part of this section is simply identifying whether or not a set of values is actually a function. A function is a special type of relation where each input has only one output. For example, here are three relations. The X values are the inputs and the Y values are the outputs. Let's look at set A first. This is a function because each number on the left is connected to only one number on the right. Now for set B, the number two on the left is connected to both three and four on the right, so set B is not a function. Finally, in set C, each number on the left is only pointed to number two on the right, so this is a function two. Nice, we've made it through the whole competency. That's over half of your test already. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please give us a like, drop us a comment, let me know, am I pulling off this haircut? My ego needs the validation. The rest of your test will be made up of questions on geometry and data. What's the data on data, you ask? Geometry and data makes up 38% of the questions on your test. Let's break this part down a little further. The two sections found in this competency are geometry and measurement, so that's the geometry part, and probability and statistics in discrete mathematics. Oh, okay, that sounds a little more intimidating. Hang on. Okay, all that really means is just analyzing data. There we go, that's better, yeah. But to really get the confidence that you deserve to pass this test, get that 240 study guide. Our guides have hundreds of questions, in-depth videos, and test aligned study materials so you know that you're getting what you need. So in our experience, we've identified a few key concepts that are super likely to appear on the test, and they're gonna give you a nice leg up when you take it. Speaking of legs, let's dive into triangles and do a little example from geometry and measurement. What? Legs, like, Legs like triangles have legs, you know, I'm connecting. It's kind of a joke. Yeah, okay, one of the things that you're gonna need to know in this geometry section is the Pythagorean theorem. And this one's gonna sound familiar. A squared plus B squared equals, say it with me at home, C squared. It's okay if you need to brush up on that formula. As a matter of fact, let's just take a sneak peek at some study material right now. In this diagram, A equals four units, 
B equals 3 units and C equals 5 units. Geometrically, the square of A can be shown as a square with sides of length A. Likewise, the square of B can be shown as a square with sides of length B, and the square of C by a square with sides of length C. When the Pythagorean theorem is tested, the two sides are equal. By using the Pythagorean theorem, you can find the length of any side of a right triangle if the other two sides are known. Let's try an example. A right triangle has a hypotenuse of 10 centimeters, and one leg of eight centimeters. What is the length of the third side? First, write the equation and fill in the known information. We were given the hypotenuse 10 and one leg eight. So we have eight squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. We will be solving for b, the missing leg. Simplify, square the known values and combine like terms which gives us b squared equals 36. Isolate by taking the square root of both sides, leaving us with b equals six. So the length of the missing side is six centimeters. When you subscribe, there's a lot more where that came from. And hey, there's only one more category to go. We're on to the last part of geometry and data, the analyzing data portion. So analyzing data is gonna require you to yeah, analyze data, you'll be given a data set and need to calculate the mean, median, mode, or range, or asked to choose the best type of graph to represent that data. You could be given a graph and asked to interpret what the graph is showing you about a data set. And here's a tip, you'll probably get mostly graphs and charts to look at. For instance, you may be shown a graph like this one and asked, which type of movie is the most popular among children? First, make sure you know what you're looking at, then read the chart and you might have to use the numbers from the chart to do a simple calculation, but that's it. We've talked through most of the categories and the biggest concepts you'll come up against on this exam. Now that we've gone over some of the biggest concepts in our two areas, let's look at some practice questions so we can see how this is gonna show up on the test. And if you want a full slate of practice questions, click the link below for a full free practice test. At the end, you have a score report and you'll know where you did good and where you did poorly and how you can train your focus as you study. And remember, 240 study guides always have a money back guarantee that you'll pass. Now, let's get into the questions. Remember the numbers and operations section we talked about earlier? We're gonna need to know the order of operations. Let's look at how this is reflected in a question. Simplify this expression. 82 minus 100 divided by four plus six times 12. All right, kind of complicated, but let's start to run through PEMDAS. There are no parentheses or exponents in this expression, so we can skip those steps. Then we move to multiplication and division from left to right. So 100 divided by four equals 25 and six times 12 is 72. So now our expression is 82 minus 25 plus 72. We can simplify the remaining addition and subtraction from left to right. So our final answer is 129. One question down. Moving on to the algebra section. What is the solution to this system of equations? Negative four X plus three Y equals negative five, and y equals x minus one. Substitution is the easiest method to use to solve this system because one equation has a variable that is isolated. So we can substitute in x minus one for y. Now our equation is negative four x plus three times the quantity of x minus one equals negative five. If we simplify, we end up with x equals two. Then we substitute x in our second equation and y equals one. So the correct answer is two, one. What about those tricky functions questions? Let's check out what those look like. Which of the following relations represent a function? So in order for a number set to be a function, there can only be one output for every input. Or in other words, the x value can't repeat. So looking at choice A, there are two zeros in the x column, so it is not a function. In the next choice, each plotted point has a different x value, so it is a function. Then we move on to see that the input of negative one is connected to both two and seven. This means it's not a function. Finally, choice D has no repeating x value, so it is a function. So choices A and C, not functions. Choices B and D though, those are functions. All right, and just like that, we've cruised through all of the arithmetic and algebra questions. On to geometry and data, starting with geometry and measurement. 
A quilter is preparing to make a quilt for a baby's crib that is 30 inches by 50 inches. The design of the quilt calls for a diagonal stripe of ribbon from one corner of the quilt to another corner as shown in the image. What is the approximate length of that diagonal stripe that goes from corner to corner? Is it 40 inches, 80 inches, 45 inches, 58 inches? All right, shouts out to my buddy Pythagoras. He's gonna help us with this one. I can see an A that we're gonna square, there's a B that we're gonna square, and that results in a C that then we find the square root of. That leaves us with this as our best answer. Let's do a tricky question from the data analysis section. The circle graph shows the results of a survey of 150 students. How many students chose basketball as their favorite sport? The problem gives us survey data, a pie chart, and asks how many students chose basketball as their favorite sport. I see an 8% wedge for basketball, so I'm inclined to pick that one. Ah, rats, that seemed too easy. Let's take a step back and try again. Since 150 students were asked, the percentage doesn't equal the number of students. Instead, we need to multiply the percentage by the total. So 8% times 150. Now, we can do this pretty easily with the calculator we're provided during the test. 8% gets entered into the calculator as 0 0.08 times 150 gives us a total of 12 students. Now, that's just a small sliver of practice questions to give you an idea of how these concepts are gonna show up on the test, but take a full practice test by clicking the link below. Congratulations on finishing the video. I really hope that you found it helpful and please give us a like or a comment if you have. And if you really wanna make sure you're prepared for the Praxis 5169, take the next step and subscribe to the 240 Study Guide. It has hours of videos so you can watch and or listen while you're doing chores. It's test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study and it has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure that you're ready. And it has a money back guarantee so you can sleep easy at night. Click the link below right now to get started.